The following podcast may contain spoilers, strong language, graphic violence, and nudity. Viewer discretion is advised. Are you ready? Yeah! Hello everyone and welcome, it's 4am once again, that means it's time for the 4am podcast, where me and my friends watch movies from our past and see how they hold up to our older, more cynical selves. I'm your host as always, Tony, joining with me today is... Brian. I'm Falco. And Joe. Alright, yeah, uh, a boy who needs a friend finds a world that needs a hero in a land beyond imagination. We watch the never-ending story from 1984. Brian, I was flying, and I pulled a muscle in my thigh. Would you come rub it for me? Oh, sure, sure. My inner yeah! thigh. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> why why does it look, seem like you, have, you got mange or something? Why are your scales all, <laughs> all flaking off and stuff? Like, I'm well, a poorly because made puppet. I haven't had a good rub down in ages. <laughs> all right, so this movie is directed by Wolfgang Peterson. Uh, who brought us Enemy Mind, uh, In the Line of Fire, Outbreak, Air Force One, <laughs> The Perfect Storm, it's a bit of a... Troy, and Poseidon, the remake anyway. Uh, Wait, the Brad Pitt one? Uh, Troy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It is a little bit of a departure for him, That's like, it? he's all over the place. That's like, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Well, there's also a good gap between some of these movies, but uh, anyway. So, uh, what's your personal history with this movie, Brian? Yo, this is my shit as a kid. Like, I, I used to want to be riding on Falcor, my Luck Dragon, and stuff. And, like, I, it was, this was my shit. Like, I, but I haven't seen this movie in, like, 20 years. So, um, yeah, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> Rob. Um, yeah, I saw this movie in the 80s, and I don't think I've seen it since then. All right, Joe. Yeah, I need to get two disclaimers out of the way before we go any further. Uh oh. <laughs> So the usual, I will refrain from making any pedophile jokes Why? throughout the, the rest of this. Well, the rest of us are going to though. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll all leave right. that up like, to the rest of the that's podcast. Pretty much, he generally does that because he knows we've got it covered. It's yeah. pretty much all I've got. And <laughs> to um, just every every five minutes or so while we're just ripping this movie a new asshole, please keep reminding yourself that it was 1984. Also remember, you can like whatever you like. It's okay, mm. but we're just, this but is what ha- we do. Have you seen this before? Uh, so, I've only seen parts of it, and I, I'm i guessing that I, if I w- ever tried to watch this, I would usually change the channel or something, because uh, this movie's boring as hell. Oh, that's such a and shame. Like, you should I have said something. Mm-hmm. You could see any parts of me that you want. Mm-hmm. This would cut into my time that could have been spent on, like, Commando or the G.I. Joe movie or Iron Eagle or something like that. <laughs> Much better quality. <laughs> uh, n- no, but... <laughs> More in my wheelhouse. It's debatable, I guess. Um, Okay, so the, the movie itself has a history, of course. Uh, it's based on a novel of Does the same Tony name. Does Tony have a history? Oh, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> sorry. I'm getting all over the place. Um, yeah, I, to be perfectly honest, I saw this a long time ago. Um, I haven't seen it since the 80s. And I kind of always, I never really went back to it because I kind of always remembered it to be really boring. Like, I knew it had cool scenes or whatever, or cool ideas and certain effects. But um, I just remember it feeling super long and boring. So I didn't really check it out since... That's my history. Well, I understand your feeling super long. Okay. So, uh, the history of this movie, it's based on a book of the same name by Michael End, I believe is how you say his name, E-N-D-E. Uh, he did not like this adaptation of the movie, and he actually was trying to, he tried to get the movie stopped at one point, uh, and ultimately ended up trying to sue the studio that was making it, which did not work. Uh, he tried to get his name removed from it. But they ultimately agreed to just put his name at the end credits and not anywhere in the beginning. He's just like, dog, can't you just say it's by Stephen King or something? <laughs> With these hands, <laughs> thought were strong. I thought wrote a good story. 
all gone now. Uh, our uh, our lead here, Atreyu, uh, apparently should have gotten some extra hazard pay for this movie as he almost died several times while filming it, um, including uh, the, the fight scene with the Gamork. He almost lost his eye when the giant robot uh, slashed at him, which... Well, they just launched it out of a cannon. <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing, from the sounds of it, uh, there was more of a fight scene planned, but after the first take went horribly awry, they were just like, yeah, scrap that shit. They're just like... He killed it somehow. Let's just, <laughs> let's just stick a My Pet Monster on the end of a fire extinguisher. <laughs> Also, while training to be on his horse, the horse at one point threw him off and then stepped on him. Oh, is that why he drowned it? <laughs> no, but in the uh, Swamp of Sadness scene, the elevator that the horse was being lowered on for the drowning scene, he got caught on and dragged under to the point where he was unconscious when they finally pulled him out. Whoa! Yeah. So, brain damage then. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Um, the, the name of the mystical island is actually poorly translated. Uh, it was actually originally supposed to be Fantastica, but, uh, you know. That sounds super dumb. Y- well, <laughs> uh, yes, but, uh, through translation it became Fantasia. And, at least as far as I know, I, this might not still be true, but from the information I found, if you go to the German studio that filmed this, you can still ride on the Falcor puppet. What? Yeah. So anyone planning a trip to uh, Germany? Huh? Yeah! But it's weirdly on its back now. Like um, belly rubs. He does like belly rubs. Anyone want to guess at how much money this movie costs to make? Uh, forty-two dollars. No, I'm playing. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go with um, 1984 practical effects. I'm gonna go with three million dollars. I was gonna guess four, so I I'm still say guess four. Eighteen. They, they didn't register at all. Like, <laughs> say Rob says eighteen. Wow, that's terrible. All right, um, I guess I'm going to have to give it to Rob's terribleness over here, uh, as it was twenty-seven million dollars. Wow, really? That's what they say. First guess was 25. In 80s money? 80s money. I think you can I, make a movie that looks better than this today with $27 million. Yeah. Um, it all went into lawsuit settlements. <laughs> <laughs> you think the boy sued Falcor? <laughs> yes. I, I think the city sued Falcor. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so does anyone want to guess at how much money this movie made? $50 million. I'm going to say 40 Go with thirty. Okay, uh, it was a hundred million dollars. Okay. Wow. So who do we have? Wait, in this wait, movie? wait, wait, wait. So that guy didn't want his name on it even after it made a hundred million dollars. Well, no, I'm sure after it made money, he was okay with that. But okay. during the production and everything, he had a problem. He's okay that the, the royalty checks had his name on him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's unclear if or when he came around on the whole idea, but uh, yeah, he just wasn't very happy with his adaptation. So, uh, who's in this movie, Joe? All right, so you have Barrett Oliver as Bastion, Gerald McRaney as Bastion's father, Noah Hathaway as Atreyu, Tammy Stronach as the childlike empress, and Alan Oppenheimer as anything that needed a voice. So, like the rock biter, Falcor, Gmork, and the narrator. All right. Wait, did, can you... Hmm? Okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. <clears throat> okay. I misheard something, so and then I my brain checked it and said, "Okay, that passes." All right. Well, now that Rob's brain has accepted this movie, what uh, what do we got with this? I didn't Rob? say that. What do we got? Yeah. Let's get into the movie. Oh, um. So let's move. We start out. We get a scene of just like I don't know, storm chaser footage or something uh flash gordon sky effects <laughs> yeah flash gordon sky <laughs> screensaver effects. and like sweet soundtrack yeah holy crap do we get an iconic song it's an iconic song but i gotta say when i was listening to it Kajugugu, this time i, I was like this sounds like an 80s sitcom theme <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> but not, not like a movie score <laughs> like we just came off watching like batman you know such iconic music and you know other other films that came out in the eighties, like Back to the Future and you know Ghostbusters. I'll tell you what, though, like I saw the, half of this movie once, 
And this song, like, I bam, I was immediately back there. Oh, yeah. Well, and also there was like, what was it in the mid 90s? There was like that remix that came out and was all over the place. And yeah, I think so. Yeah. So we start out with that. And then we, uh, somebody's got to jump in here because I'm going to forget. Okay. We we meet the main character, Bastion. Yeah, Bastard. Um, Yep. Uh, He had a dream about his mom. His dad, played by Major Dad, couldn't (laughs) give a crap. He's too busy making himself an orange juice and raw egg smoothie here. Yeah, what? Yeah. Oh. Cause that was the thing, maybe? Oh. I mean, you know, H- him and uh Rocky, I guess. That's mm-hmm. that's all I can think of. Yeah, I mean he just sits down like his son's like, Hey, dream about mom. His dad's like, you know, get, move get, on, yeah, son. Say no to school, get your eight hours of drugs. Drink <laughs> 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 your work. Which, yeah. <laughs> Drink your work, yeah. Get your head out of the clouds, put your feet on the ground. Here's a problem I have right What's off that? the bat. We need some context of timing here. Because mm-hmm. he's just, you know, yeah, your mom died, get over it. Like, she when? might have died last yeah. week. I don't yeah. know what the fuck's happening. No, but Childhood. this guy's this guy's mustache just reaches across the table and slaps some man into Bastion. <laughs> he was like, it's been six years. You're only six and a half years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That that could also be. She died five years ago. You're six now. Time to move on, kid. Yeah, I mean, basically, he's like, you know, yeah, I know your mom's dead, but that's not an excuse to fail out of school and just not do anything mm-hmm. ever. Like, get a grip. Well, yeah, but again, like a valid point, maybe. But like, if his mom died three days ago and he skipped swimming trials, that's understandable. Mm-hmm. If his mom died. You know, five years ago. Yeah, maybe you need to start looking ahead and doing other things. Yeah, but I mean, he, like, it's disappointing because he just got a brand new swimsuit in the mail from his mysterious benefactor, F. Alcor. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) So. Oh, dear. (laughs) Oh, my. Um, Yeah, I mean. That's trying to to parent here, I guess, but it's one of those talks where like the person's clearly not listening, and they're just like, "Okay, Dad," and then that's it. Right. Like, All right, I'm gonna go off to work. Okay, Joe, I'm gonna go puke up this orange juice and raw egg concoction <laughs> I made. Um, I think that's the other part of this is like, you know, I want you to do better in school. I want you to, yeah. you know. Do all this other stuff, but uh, I, I don't actually care, and I'm not going to follow up on this. So see you later. Mm. See you at the end of the night when that's, I tuck you into bed. Yeah, that's how he copes with his wife's death. He's mm. eating all these raw eggs and orange juice, and he's like, the constant need to hold back a stream of vomit is keeping my emotions in check. <laughs> so, all righty. Um, Bastion just runs into the standard 80s danger of uh, the bullies. Yeah. So it's 80s bullies, so, you know, all bets are off. I mean, like, they could do some Clarence Bodiger shit to you. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, they... They look more nerdy than he does, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, strength and yeah, numbers, but there's three I guess. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah, I get it. Mm. It's the food chain. Yep. They're just one rung up. They're not all, you know, all yeah. the way up there. They think they could be cooler kids if they bully some kids. Sure. So They're uh, right. You know. yeah, yeah, they are. They're Been <laughs> that's there. absolutely correct. Um, so they throw Stop them in a dumpster. kids, Rob. What I like, though, because you think that's just the standard 80s bullies doing their thing. And then when the kid gets out of the dumpster, they're like, who said you could get out of the dumpster? <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> they, like they waited for him. We are willing to skip our school day to make sure you don't. <laughs> yeah, go that was my thing. I was like, does anybody have to go to school or that not a thing for anyone here? So Bastion runs for his life into a bookstore, meets this weird, creepy guy. <laughs> Now, there was a long conversation about chicken nuggets and Uber Eats, so I I literally heard no <laughs> words this man said, but it's just creepy as hell. <laughs> Basically, the guy's like, get the fuck out. And the kid's like, I like books. He's like, he's like, I'll, I'll get you books. Get the fuck out. And the kid's like, I read real books, like, like Lord of, you Lord of the Rings. A, and like, But he says, you don't know what a book is. And I think he says it's these weird square, square things called books because yep. he just. Does not believe this kid knows what books are mm-hmm. until the kid, yeah, starts naming real books like Lord of the Rings and everything. And he's like, oh, yeah, books are great, but uh, you don't know what real, like, danger is from books or some shit like that. It's like, it's like your books are safe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, wee woo, wee woo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stranger danger. What does he mean? 
Uh-huh. But he pulls this whole like 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 like, re- like reverse psychology on his kid. He's like, not even because kids was interested in, into it to begin with. But he's like, um, do your books make you feel scared and stuff? He's <laughs> like, yeah. He's like, but then how do you feel afterwards? He goes, well, it's just not real, so I feel okay. He's like, there, that's your problem. It's like, what? Your books are too safe. So what the fuck are you playing, at, old man? Like, what the fuck are you? Gonna... <laughs> Let me tell you about Fight Club. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got this real a real book with real stakes. It's called the Kama Sutra. No <laughs> idea. If you don't finish this book by tomorrow, I'm gonna kill you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let me offer you these chick tracks. Yeah, he basically just makes it sound like this book is the end all be all awesome shit. Um and at that point we were theorizing that like it's a cursed book and the yeah. guy's like it's trapped in reading this cursed book and he's the only way you can get rid of it is either finish it or give it to someone else. So he's like, I gotta let this little kid take it. Yeah. I think that's a valid point because yeah. if you think about the rest of the movie, it totally makes sense. Like he's an older guy; he's starting to lose his imagination mm-hmm. as a child. He so, couldn't think of a name. Hmm? He, more or less, he couldn't be bothered to deal with it. Is what it really is. Well, he wasn't an Earthling child, so even if he could come up with a name, mm. that might be. But. Uh, yeah, like maybe, you know, because his imagination was waning, he had to pass it on to somebody else. Okay, okay, okay. So we got to remake this movie. Current, present day. Uh, Bastion's like 50-something. and Well, no. He'd be in his 40s. A little older than us. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, student loan debt out of his asshole. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> but he still has his damn book. He's like, making wishes on. It's not working the same anymore. <laughs> He's like... Come on, book. I just, I just need one more Sally Mae payment. Come on, book. that book can't get him the job he wants in his chosen career. I don't know because he didn't go to school. No. <laughs> That's what I was picturing. Is like correct. he dives bomb the Sally Mae office with Falcor and just takes a big shit on the side of the building. You know, wastes all, all his all, all his kids are are in the pages of the books. Now Falcor would have cleaned him. So now, now he's yeah. to find some other kid to like to get off his hands, but it's a horror movie now. Like just switch, switch genres all together. Also, it's like an e-reader instead of a book. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's just living in a one-bedroom apartment with Falcor. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Saw meets meets the story. Come Do you on, want to read a book? Well, yeah, we did kind of there. It's kind of like The Ring, where like you need to pass it on to the next kid to get rid mm-hmm. of it. So you come survive. on, Bastion. It's Thursday. It's time to express my anal gland. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> but yeah, so kid, kid steals the book, mm-hmm. and uh, as soon as he does, the old man like starts smiling at him. So I'm like, this guy's planning this shit. Like this yeah. is some yeah, bullshit. Uh, got some. Uh, "Quote unquote wrestling magazines in there." Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's excited. Here, it's good to see. Here's where I had some beef. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movie is a blatant ripoff of the film that came out in the '60s called Godzilla's Revenge, <laughs> in which a little Japanese boy is hounded by bullies and finds solace in an imaginary land called Monster Island, where he has to help Godzilla's son. Save Monster Island. You're going, you're going with, with that one? Yeah, I'm going. I'm going with there. That one? Okay. I'm going there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, when he said film from the '60s, I was like, "Where is Rob going?" And I'm like, "Oh, uh, yeah. of course, yeah. That's that's the only sp- ass suit." Yeah. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> and he has to teach Baby Godzilla to use Godzuki, if not mistaken. It's Minya. Oh, I'm sorry. To use his <laughs> Godzuki. He is. I do believe he is named Godzuki at some point in the series <laughs> to, to use his breath powers uh-huh. to fight off the bullies on Monster Island. I believe he does this by jumping on his tail. He does. Well, Godzilla steps on his tail. Oh, it's Godzilla and makes him shoot out. The, you know what? I'm gonna stop. This is too much of a detour. Let's get back to the. <laughs> Wow, where Rob can yeah. stop his own detour. <laughs> right, so okay. I'm running out of to read him. Goes to school. Uh, he's missing his math test. He says, fuck it, I'm going to hide yeah. it, and I'm going to read this book. Yeah. All right, so this school has several problems. <laughs> you, you only see everything but the creepy room for like a minute, but there's a, there's a few things I observed. So one, the school has these weird little peephole windows that you would find on prison cells. Yep. On, on each of the doors. Um so just like, I guess the principal can just peer in on a class. Like, I don't know. How they slide in your food tray. Yeah, it's how they slide in your food tray. Well, they got to keep Falcors out. Yeah. <laughs> Falcor can't fit through there. 
Um, then he runs upstairs to the attic, which has one of those, like, in case of emergency, break glass boxes that has the key to the attic. That's broken. That's broken. Yeah, no one's replaced that, covered that, taken oh, the rest of the broken that, glass out. I, you're in a school full of kids. Somebody's swiping that in a moment. In a minute, yeah. yeah I, I will argue... And someone's getting cut on that, like, oh, immediately. Yeah. As someone who's going to a public school, uh-huh. finding one of those broken and not replaced is not that uncommon. Well, but the, at least the contents are missing. Yeah, there's no, that, there's no key the in there. Thing. Yeah, the, the key would not still be in there. Um, so then he goes up to the attic? I guess. Store, storage room. It's the, no, there's like a full haunted house it's in like this school. It's like chamber. Like, it's the room of requirement. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't. No school around around anywhere is made of like wood and planks. It's all just solid concrete blocks. Mm-hmm. In which you're like, not legally allowed to do that anymore. Right. Like the base of the school that he's in in the first place is those concrete blocks. Mm-hmm. He goes up this like staircase, like normal concrete staircase. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden he's in like a Blinken's mausoleum. Yeah. And no school ever had the budget to have any of the things that are in there. No, yeah. um, like there's like wolf heads and skulls, and there's like a like iron barred staircase going down somewhere else. It's, it's a freaking Broadway production of Hamlet up in that yeah. attic. Mm. So anyway, it's what just school. Did y'all go to what what school did y'all go to? We all went to basically the same schools. Like yeah, I mean, like this you shit had, was in like my my school. You, you had, had a creepy you had an attic? upstairs attic. Well, it was it was wasn't well. I mean, it was, but. So my school was so old, it was like all run down and falling apart. So when I was in school, they actually tore it down. We had to go to go to a different school. But the old building had a whole bunch. It was all brick, um, brick and stuff like that. But like, yeah, it was like old ass prop shit all over the place and stuff like that. Like there was areas of the base we couldn't go in because it was full of storage, storage shit like that. And my high school was even worse. Our high school had a bowling alley, a shooting range. Oh my god! Like, oh. How is it worse? It sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Ours had shit. had a field. And another that, field. A field that was sometimes a shooting range. But. Yeah. And like one stadium that they put a lot of money, they put all of the money in. Yes. Yes. And then, and then another a, field. A bridge that they built for 12 yeah. years. We did have an ice skating rink. That was pretty cool. But that was about it. There was a troll living in it. There was like a shop wing that if you went into, you immediately needed a tetanus shot. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I used to spend a lot of time in that shop wing. <laughs> yep. But anyway. So, anyway, yeah, he locks himself up in this attic, uh, which also he can just do. He's got the one and only key to this attic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Locks himself up there. No one comes to check on him even after the school day is over. No one knows he's there. And they, they probably call his house, but his mom's not answering. Mm-hmm. His dad's probably somewhere. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> his dad's probably somewhere on, 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 on base somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's... <clears throat> Huh. His dad is at the local bar looking for a new mom. Anyway. So he starts reading the book. And um, everyone I talked to when I said we were doing this movie this week said this movie is like three hours long. Because um, it feels it. And I could see why. Because <laughs> it's like it has about the amount of content of things going on in a three hour movie. But there's no like establishing shots or anything till the end, like when we start flying on Falcor, then we get some. But like, but it's establishing shots of what? It's well, because that's the thing. Because now we're just like, there's a guy with a snail, there's a guy with a bat, there's a rock biter. It's all just here, <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck is any of this? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah they throw you right in, and you're just there. You're, it's going. It's like too bad. Just figure it out. <laughs> yeah, while we were watching this, I got up to get a glass of water, and literally, like from my point of view, I, I walked out while he was up in the attic about to read this book. I walked back in. There's a giant rock creature about to run over this guy riding a snail mm-hmm. and this other dude riding a bat. And, like, I was just like, I missed so much. Yeah. Oh, I shit. don't know how. Oh, it, we were, when did like, I get they, high? You didn't really miss anything. It's just, yeah. We're just here. So. No, yeah. Apparently, I didn't miss anything. They just dump you in there. There are several points in the movie where I looked down to write something in my notebook. And I looked back up and I was like, where the fuck are we? <laughs> yep. I think the reason why it, it felt so much longer as a kid so we all probably saw it on TV, yeah, um, which meant really commercials, uh, which meant you know commercials, which meant kids commercials. So it was like probably every five minutes it probably was having mm. like new commercials. So it probably took three hours for real, like on TV. And um, it really does. It looks like a two and a half to three hour movie just cut down to ninety minutes. They just cut out anything superfluous. 
Which is crazy because I checked the official runtime earlier, and it said it was two hours and ten minutes long. Mm -hmm. Maybe we got some kind of condensed version. If so, thank goodness. Yes. <laughs> Man, I could not. I could not sit through any more of that. So, um, yeah, we just we meet an array of weirdos. You got this. <coughs> we got Deep Roy in his racing snail. We got this other looks like a brownie from Willow guy with a giant bat. Narcoleptic bat. Narcoleptic bat. A giant bat. Mm -hmm. And then we have a rock biter. Yeah. It's Fern Gully. It's just Fern Gully yeah. up in there. <laughs> now, this rock biter, was he just pushing a giant wheel, or did it actually, was it something he was riding? No, it, it was like, like a, a, a tricycle he was riding. Oh, just with yeah. one, so it's essentially a big wheel. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hence the Born to be Wild song in the sequel. Mm. I think that's the third one. Sure. Mm. Whatever. Let's not go there. Um, Numbers don't matter when it's the never-ending story. So... All right, the rock biter attempts to eat a rock, but as Brian pointed out, his puppet does not have a hole that the rock can go down, so he just drops rocks on everybody else. Yeah. And it's like Cookie Monster eating cookies. Yeah. It's just kind of... Ah, blah, 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 yeah, making yeah. a gross mess and mm -hmm. spilling it everywhere. And my first note is, I'm sure I'm supposed to be enchanted by all this, but I'm just bored. Mm -hmm. So there's clearly a lot of imagination put into all these, though, like these... They're, they're cool concepts, they're cool costumes, but already you're just like, what are we talking about? What are we doing? Why are we here? Yeah, nothing is happening. Yeah. People are just... Nothing like, is happening. Well, they're talking about there's, there's a nothing, you know, consuming the, <laughs> the east, west, and... Uh, south. And south. Yeah. But, um, like, they're like, all right, well, let's go to the Empress then. Okay, I guess. Sure. Because of nothing. Because of nothing. Well, yeah, like the rock biter says, like all his friends and everything were... Used to go down by this lake, but then he went one day and it just was nothing. It's like a bad Monty Python no joke, though. Yeah. It's like, oh, all my friends were killed. By what? By nothing. <laughs> well, what killed them? Nothing. Well, then what's wrong? Nothing. Sure. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, so so they go off to this the Crystal Castle uh, where they find... It, it's It really, it's the dude from the Lego movie. That's all I can think. The that dude. Vitruvius? <laughs> Was that who it was? The one played by Morgan Freeman? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's him. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's... I was thinking that penis-headed Jedi from the yeah. prequels. Yeah. I, I can see that, too. But, uh, yeah, he's he's commanding for the princess. Oh, but he's there's all Empress. kinds of just Sorry. weirdos in this room. Oh, yeah. And you're like, I want to see these people talk. Like, I want to I wanna learn about their characters and their people. Like, who are the giant stone heads that are just wheeling around? You know, there's just, there's all kinds of little people covered in feathers and stuff. Now, and here's my biggest problem with all of this. What? Um, just, yeah. We, we start out establishing, you know, we got the rock butter, giant rock mountain man. You got the this weird little guy who's riding his race mm -hmm. snail. We got yeah. the, the brownie with his narcoleptic bat. We got these giant rockhead mm -hmm. things. We got these other people that have two or three heads and like all this craziness going on. Like, who are we going to follow for this movie? I Some try kid. you. It's just a little oh. boy. No, like it's a D and D module. That's what this is. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's because they're like just enough story to get you like get you thinking about stuff. But like if you just use the module as it is, it's kind of boring. You gotta add your own flair to it. So this is a module with no flair added to it. Like, yeah. That's all it is. Well, yeah, and I, I get that, but, like, that's why I usually don't do that. <laughs> like, you know, again, it's the, he's a young boy, so the young boy can see himself in that role and blah, blah, whatever. But You hate kid everything, yeah. I know. I, I know. do. I know. I just, I know. Even I when you were a kid, it. you hated yeah. kid everything. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, you're just all rolling, right. you're just flipping a coin for your... I'm going to start calling you, calling you what, Morga, so Morla. Morla? The, tur the turtle. Oh, yeah. I didn't catch the name because I was so uninterested by that point. Yeah. All right. So anyway. Find um, out there's an empress that's going to save us. Sure. Well, the empress is dying yep. currently. She needs someone to save her. Uh, so she gives out the Orin. Mm -hmm. That's the name of this deal. It's uh, As Rob described it, two snakes blowing each other. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, they... It's two two headed snakes blowing each other. Oh, okay. Two headed snakes? Because they had a head on both ends, and both ends were blowing the other ends. Oh. <laughs> that sounds complicated. Either way, they got this at Spencer Gifts. Um, sure. So uh, 
yeah, they, they call upon this great warrior that they were told was coming, named Atreyu, who is this young boy. Uh, and they send him out there to go find whatever, just something. Like, they, they, can't they don't bring any say, weapons right? with him. He he has has for some reason. No, no, but he can't bring it with him. Yeah. Oh. yeah. He had to put it down. Yeah, they, so they make him give it up. And he couldn't go. He reasons. had to go alone. So why? I don't know, because he needed weapons at one point. Yeah, why Why was this a rule? Yeah, and he he did many parts Story? of this adventure with other people. What, so, so he broke both those rules. Yeah, like what? Should I, tear out all his pubic hair. I, <laughs> Motherfucker. He doesn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's why now. Yeah. A little proto Lou Diamond Phillips didn't have any pubic hair. Like <laughs> Hormone muscle hasn't come by yet. <laughs> well, unless you can of Oh, he's alcohol. acting in this movie like the hormone monster's coming by. <laughs> He would have so, had a hard time getting past that first gate. You know? I just don't understand the whole concept of these rules because it doesn't make any sense. Well, they're me. never mentioned again. Right. Yeah, why, again. Why would they be? be? to be broken. That's why. Mm. Well, okay, two things. For one. Just two. Well, two major points. Uh, as I said, this is based on a book. And as far as I've read, basically the first book ends about halfway through this movie. So they crammed a lot in here. And I'm sure there's a whole lot more maybe explained or they delve into in the book. We get none of that. Oh, this is before the age of the trilogy, huh? Yeah. So, um, yeah, he gets his little amulet with the cover of the book and he goes on his quest. And all that stuff that we've been talking about is done. Like, you know, no rock fighter, no yeah. no nope. snail guy. Doesn't matter. I'll see you when I come back yeah. towards the end of this the movie. This whole court of weirdos, all gone. We do get one scene, though, where we introduce... I guess the villain? Uh, yeah, well, th that's another problem with this movie. Other than Falcon. Because, <laughs> well, at first I was intrigued with the concept of nothing being the villain, just like the end of existence. Like, there's no there's no play between the antagonist and protagonist there. So they needed something. So they have this wolf guy that's chasing them. Yeah. And I will say, the, in this uh, introduction... Gamork. Gamork? Wasn't it Gamork? Gamork. Gamork. Oh, Gamork. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> great, great name, first of all. But, uh... When they introduced this, like as a child, I'm sure that would have freaked me out. It, freaked mm -hmm. me like, out. it was a, it was a pretty cool, yeah, like introduction. Yeah, again, it was and 1984, they and they should have left it there. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> once he starts talking <laughs> yeah. later on in the movie, well, you just throw that out the window. But in th this scene was pretty cool. Like it shows uh, the kid, or is the kid reading the book, and it's like describing the evil something or other. Yeah. And it's just yeah. showing this dark hole, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, like, you see, like, yeah, yeah, lightning flash, and the old mother dies, and then this freaking wolf, like, <laughs> just comes out of the the lightning and looks. Oh, I feel it. It's coming back again. Coming back again, like a rolling thunder, chasing the, the wind. wind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it was actually pretty. It was pretty good. I will say it was a good jump scare kind of thing. Yeah. We get a little bit of wolf cam around mm -hmm. here. Wolf cam. <laughs> um, and then we don't see that for better than a, a wolf child. Yeah. Uh, so he goes and he just begins his quest and rides off through a bunch of cool looking lands. And then uh, we're like, can we adventure in any of those? Nope. nope. Swamp of sadness. Yeah, well, what's that? Oh, we're going to talk about the swamp of sadness. Rob's uh, refilling his beverage. I was like, free quick away. Did I miss it? Am I late? Hmm. Well, okay. I'm just going to start with saying though. They tell him to go alone. He apparently just did not listen to this and brought his horse. You got so to ride your horse. Well, the universe said, fuck you. I told go you to go alone. alone. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he's going through the swamp of sadness. It's, 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 he ain't, ain't a hobbit. He's not walking. He should have been walking. Now, this is the yeah. scene that everybody talks about when they talk about the never ending story. And I didn't realize it happens like immediately. Like, we have just started yeah. the adventure. Like, all the stuff we've been BSing about, well, we're maybe like 20 minutes in. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we get to the Swamp of Sadness, we're going through it, and as long as you stay up beat or whatever, you're fine, I guess, mm -hmm. but... So it's like, it's like quicksand, but only when you get sad. Mm -hmm. You get sad, it sucks you in, and you can't get out. So, I mean, mm -hmm. as long as you go through before you hit your, like, late 20s, early 30s, you should be all right. Well, that's why this little boy was doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this horse, horse. though. <laughs> no, it's horse. It just gives up. Yeah. Oh, I'll try you. I forgot my medication this morning. There's like three chapters of this kid just reading about this horse's inner thoughts. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> For some reason, I had it in my head that you you hear his inner thoughts. The Love horse? It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, there's a giant rock creature. Anything's possible. Those are your own voices, Tony. Yes. Well, now I know that. I'm that reminded. horse in those Black Beauty movies, he's so majestic. I'll but never be like Think that. about this. It was rather irresponsible for Trey to bring him in here in the first place because it's just a fucking horse. Like, it's not, it doesn't seem like it's a magical creature or anything. So the moment it starts to sink, it's going to be like, oh, I'm sad that I'm sinking. And then it's dead. So yeah, little, which is exactly what happened. That pony sugar snap, she'll never look at me. Yeah. I'll never have a chance. I could have been something. Here I am just dragging this little kid around. It's never going to go anywhere. My father always told me I'd amount to nothing. <laughs> this is why we had to wait for you? <laughs> what was that horse's name? Artax? Artax. Yeah. I was just going to be Artax. glue anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, Thanks for noticing me. So... As a kid, I do remember this scene is sad as yeah, shit. Yeah, sad as fuck. Like, it's real sad. But watching but it now, you're just it's like... It's not, though. What? Yeah, it is. I didn't even know the damn horse's name except he was screaming it three times. Yeah, I have to say, it doesn't have the same effect. Because, like, again, I was thinking this was, like, late in the movie. Like, he spent time with this yeah. horse and everything. Like, no, he just, he starts out his adventure and the horse is immediately sucked under. Like, like I was trying not to laugh. <laughs> I'm honest with you. This is I won't go that far. cold hearted bastards. <laughs> no, I won't go it's, that far, but like it, it's, it's a, a cold, sad scene. I'm a cold hearted sad. snake. It could get sad. Blowing itself. <laughs> you don't play by rules. <laughs> uh oh. Uh-oh. Joe, don't play the fool now. Yeah. I'm like, is he really going there? Like, yeah. really? Like, <laughs> Apparently, today we're just in 90s pop hits. <laughs> but no, it's, it's sad as fuck. You think about like. Like it's he, if you get sad you die like and the whole mm. place is a swamp of sadness where everything goes there goes there to die it's like that yep. it, it's, it's called puberty. puberty the turtle so it's the turtle that we come across next more 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 low whatever it's a big fucking sad depressed fucking turtle like like fucking Eeyore but it's a turtle and it's all sad and it's, a, it's fucking a sad scene and it's allergic to youth yeah youth but, or humans probably because he wasn't sad mm. um I couldn't tell if it said allergic to youth or just allergic to you. I think he said you. Oh, I yeah. thought he said youth, but either way, he was allergic to. <laughs> it's, to I mean, I have the same allergy, so yeah. I, I can I can understand. But yeah, so after he loses this poor horse, and he's, which also I don't understand why he didn't sink because he's just screaming and crying. All right, because he knows he's got a he's got listeners. Stay strong. Uh, I guess right in. What's sadder, this horse death or Agro's death in Shadow of the Colossus? Oh, Agro, a thousand times Agro. As an I know, adult, I never aggro. played that game. I mean, I like as an adult, and this death really is just a step sadder than when you're playing Super Mario World and you just have to jump off Yoshi to make a jump and you just <laughs> drop him in the pit. It's <laughs> yeah, like wow. a tick above that. Yeah, it's like all right, I'll get but, another no- Yoshi in a minute. Yeah, at, as a child, this was some serious shit. Brian, I suggest you play Shadow of Glasses. It's actually being released for PlayStation Four. I, I don't own one of those, so listeners want to write in and uh, chip right. in and like, buy me a PS4. You can come here and play my PS4. Oh, okay, yeah. but still, yes. listeners would like to send us a PS4. Listen, you want to sponsor an episode? You want us to watch uh, Never Ending Story two or three? Just send us twenty dollars, please. Don't. please, don't. please don't. <laughs> guys, guys, I remember. I remember two sucked ass. I mean, I, I, I want one. twenty dollars, but like we all want twenty dollars. I don't want it that bad. <laughs> I mean, we'll just spend it frivolously <laughs> on a PlayStation 4 for Brian. No, nah, I'm about I'm, I'm to buy a Switch now. I think that's what I'm leaning towards. Yeah, but if you had, like, if if you had listener money. <laughs> we, we will never have listener money, Rob. Let's... You don't know. Anyway. Don't, don't geld your horse before it's drowned in the swamp of sadness. In the swamp of sadness. Yeah. So what does it matter? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Go ahead. Of, take my balls. I don't care. We he comes across a mountain. He calls Mount Myrtle or what? Shall I'll never I? stud, and neither shall will I? you, betray you. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, uh, yeah, Shell Mountain, I guess, because it's a shell. Whatever. It's a giant turtle that's stuck in this damn swamp, and it's been alive for so long, just stuck there. It's just so. Like, miserable and depressed. Mm. It's been talking to itself, and it no longer gives a shit about anything. Right. Quality of turtle puppet. Meh. This one I thought worked. This was one of the ones that did it for me. This was okay. 
as long as you only viewed it from the front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When they did the side shots, they kind of lost it all. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Yeah, I d honestly, I don't think any of these puppets were bad. The bigger problem was the they did not even attempt to make them match what they were saying. Now, was this well, that, that's the thing, because um, like early on, I feel like the best work is happening in the beginning. And then like, like once Falcor shows up, you're like, fuck. oh, God, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, because that rock biter was just all over the place. Was this a Henson joint or was this separate? Uh, I believe this was separate because this is. This is a German-made production. Henson, they use the Henson all over it, right? Usually, yeah. So I thought, <gasps> like, it could have been. I thought they were attached to. I maybe they're. Remember. Maybe they did the sequels. That's that's I, possible I, I too. Know. Like, there. I remember the sequels more than I like. I remember this, but only you're a little older. No, no, no. Like, I don't think I've ever seen the sequels. Hmm. It was only because I've seen like that movie magic show. They had they had this featured. Or the sequels featured, and I thought it was like Henson stuff. So Maybe Henson pick up, pick up the sequels. Maybe. It, yeah, that's what yeah, I'm thinking. They could be involved here. They could. It kind of reeks of Henson. It's it's got that style somewhat. It, I don't feel it's quite as good. That's why I don't really think it's him. But like, it could be his company. I I don't know. I did not uh, find that out while researching. Because so. the, the Rock Biter looks like the Ninja Turtle movie <laughs> to me. A little bit. So basically, bottom line, the turtle, like Fusrodah, sneezes this kid out of the trees a few times. So now he's covered with mud and snot. Basically tells him, he's like, fuck you, I don't, I'm not going to help you. You might have to ask the Southern Oracle. She's 10,000 miles from here. I'm out. Deuces. And that's basically what everybody says at, the, at Bastion's school. Because uh, they close the school, everyone goes home, and Bastion's like, I'm staying here. <laughs> nope. Yep. It's like, whatever. I'm sure my dad's worried sick. Fuck him. <laughs> there are no cell phones, so who cares? Yeah. My dad probably hasn't even noticed yet. Cops are going to be looking but, for me by the time uh, I'm done with this book, but whatever. I doubt his father pays that much attention. Mm. Well, he might notice the next day when he's not at the breakfast table, but... I doubt his father's alive at this point with <laughs> those <laughs> shitty drinks. <laughs> That's entirely possible as well. So, anyway, uh, yeah, the kid's like, I'm going to stay here for the night. I'm um, just... Gonna keep on reading because that's Atreyu would keep going. Mm -hmm. So Atreyu keeps going. He's gotta he's gotta find some way to get you know thousands of miles away, and he's not sure how he's gonna do it when he's about to get attacked by the Gamork and uh, a giant luck dragon just comes out mm -hmm. of the sky. Swoop, swoop. Let's get ready to sink into the swamp. Swoop grasped. Oh God, this is <laughs> this is rough. Yeah, like like my memories. Remember this way differently because mm. um, my little six-year-old brain was because like, you didn't know about pedophiles yet. Yeah, like well, no, it's just, I mean just just the effects <laughs> yeah, alone, yeah. like mm. like oh, uh, this is uh, well, like tough when the watch. foot grabs him, you're like oh, but then when when he's flying off into the sky, you're like oh no, <laughs> 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 like, um, and now this uh the the next scene we're gonna talk about is uh. You have to imagine Rob is just giggling the entire time, <laughs> just for like half an hour straight. Yeah, you're not wrong. Atreyu wakes up after being unconscious for a little while uh, to find Falcor looking over him. To do uh, all no, right. Falcor's asleep. He's asleep next to Falcor. So mm. this is a giant camel dog dragon monster with just atrociously large eyes like a weird mustache <laughs> weird mustache <laughs> so his scales are supposed to look majestic and dragon like but they're they're kind of gross yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're real gross. gross like i think it might be one of those ones where we're looking at it on a bigger tv and better definition than we ever were supposed to oh, yeah. yeah for sure like if you took like corn on the cob right <laughs> yeah and like paint it white with some like you know that little that, that oily translucent kind of shit, mm -hmm. whatever. It's iridescent paint. Yeah, like that's like that's sprinkle it, but, a little glitter on them. It's like corner of the cob. That's how the scales yeah. look like. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, it was weird looking. Uh, and but, then that's protruding from hair too. So whenever you have hair and scales, it's always kind of a. Uh, that's a tough one to do, and yeah, yeah, it's not. It's rarely ever a good a uh, good look for anything or anyone. But uh, yeah, Trey finds he's all. They, they mention how he's like cleaned up and everything. It's like, mm, I found you and I cleaned you and I dressed you. 
the pretty much, pretty much. That's <laughs> that's, that's, no, that's exactly speaking with a, with a very Takei esque voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <laughs> yeah, Atreyu seems to get weirded out, and he tries to run, but Falcor is just like, "Hey, will you scratch behind my ear?" <laughs> <laughs> I give free mustache rides <laughs> on my dick. <laughs> oh. But he honestly, he's like, you know, you were out for a while, wink. And it's like, why yeah. the wink? There's we too, don't need that. Too many suggestive winks here. <laughs> so basically, I like um, kids. Wink. By the way, you're missing a button on your underpants. <laughs> so Falcor flew him 9,900, no, 9,800 something miles. Yeah. Whatever. Uh. So he's like, oh, you got me closer. He's like, yeah, you know, you're lucky. We're luck so like, lucky. What do I do? Yeah. He's like, well, I'm all alone now. He's like, you're not alone. Over there, there's some little, little less people that will, like, tell you some stuff you should know. Because it's a DB module mm-hmm. and you have to have things be convenient. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Go over there and meet the two people that should be interesting, but are not. But they're not. Like, you, you see them and you're like, these guys look cool. I want to learn about them. And then you're like, there's nothing cool it's about like these Miracle two. Max, he's not. Yeah. It's like the family from the ref, but old and gross. Mm-hmm. I mean. Sure. She didn't try to fucking trade you, so. I mean. How do you know? Uh, true, true. Although, and, and you, well, you mean he. Uh, Either way, uh, he was like, uh, both uh, of you uh, are too old. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Spacey, Joe. Yeah, that is a little too hidden. But, all right. So, uh, yeah, this weird elderly brownie couple or whatever they are, mm. there's, I don't even know what the fuck they're doing. What are the names? Do they even say? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, don't they know. did. They said the guy's name because he's, he's important in scientific circles. No. Oh. He says that a lot. It's gross and Grossina. Yeah. Sure. Gross and Grossina. I like all that. Right. Basically, they, they, the show them, they show them a fancy telescope. And that you can see the first gate, the sphinxes. They're like, check out this this asshole in plate mail is about to ride his horse through there. And the sphinxes are like, I see you looking at my boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Laser eyes. Now those sphinxes, yeah, had some sweet tits. They did. They did. Yeah. not gonna lie. It would be hard not to look at them. No, You're but uh, not gonna find that in children's movies yeah. these days. So basically, they they could tell how um, how brave you are, or what was it something like it? Like if you doubt yourself. They kill you. Yeah, if, yeah. If you if you don't know your own self worth. Yeah. So um, like the four of us would would get shot the moment we oh, stepped in. Listen, hold on I, a second. Okay, I would at not least have the made, three of us yeah, would. Yeah. I would not have made it out of the uh, swamp of sadness. Just immediately step off and nope, I'm gone. Well, because you're not taking. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Going down because you need to take your horse antidepressants. <laughs> they do. Um. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I don't know. I think I maybe would have made it far enough to be like, "Oh, look, a wolf." <laughs> <laughs> I might, I might have made it to the second, <laughs> second gate. To the second gate. So it's basically at this point, Rob was probably the only one that got to ride on Falcor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Leave me alone with this dude. In fairness, I'm pretty sure Brian would have just been like, "We need someone to just adventure. You have to go alone and can't bring weapons." And Brian would be like, "Nope." <laughs> I'm like, "Okay." You want me to ride on that dog monster? Okay. He wants to ride on you. It's okay. like, oh. All right, so maybe Rob gets past the Sphinxes, but you're not getting past that second gate. Mm, Well, Rob, mm, you know I'm a lot more aerodynamic if you take your shirt off. (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no, Rob. Put that back on. (laughs) What's the matter, Falcor? I'm just not used to so much hair. So, yeah, so... scales. So the the, the armor knight goes through, gets, gets, gets zorped. And the train was like, I can do this. He just starts just running. <laughs> yeah, the guy the guy gets fried and the train was like, I wanna do that. <laughs> and um um the 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 the, the little brown guy is like, yo, wait till I tell you about, about gate number two. Like yeah, he's also get some more information. Fuck you, like he's like, yo, you got a Falcor. <laughs> just fly over that <laughs> shit. <laughs> Which is funny, it's like just go around it. Like, yeah. like, just, just <laughs> like the kid's an accomplished climber too. Like it's not like just it's a mesa. Just climb over it. Like, yeah, don't yeah. go through that valley. Well, Falcor was like, 
breasts. Ugh, so gross. Well, he yeah. was he was he was getting getting uh, getting his uh, his shots from from the missus. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Poor gonorrhea. <laughs> but I mean, she's stabbing him with like a syringe, like the size of a short sword. He's basically just like giving him an epidural. Yeah. He was like, he was like, did I catch something for that kid? It's gonna be shot. It's just a kid. So, uh, uh, <laughs> he shot a penicillin. Yeah. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> all right. So basically, like he's all cocksure until he gets to like the he gets up to the guy who just got warped. And he's like, oh, man, that guy's really cooked. And Sphinxes are like, oh, we're opening our eyes. And then he basically just makes a reflex save and yeah. jumps through it. Pretty much, yeah. 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 Um, Which, what? <laughs> yeah. So, re- so that's not even a, like, they, they still deemed him unworthy, but because he dodged it? They're like We only got to fire it. once, yeah. Okay, that's ridiculous. He's barely sure. worthy, I guess. Sure. I mean, he got to where the night night was. And they hadn't opened their eyes yet. Mm-hmm. The night was so the night had been absorbed already. So you know, he, like he got further than the, than the yeah. night, night did. So he was more all right. Fair. All right. So otherwise, much as we're poo pooing this, the sphinxes do look pretty cool, and yeah. I do kind of I like the suspense of the scene. Oh yeah, yeah, and they do have really nice tits. Yeah, they do. All right, so now <laughs> we're just we're just on Hoth, just snow. Yeah, what? Just uh, it's just it's like salt, immediately. Jim. It's salt. Are you sure? From Falcor. Was Maybe. Falcor just flying around in like a tornado, spreading his dandruff yeah. everywhere? Because yeah, they had that one rebel guy that was like, salt. Oh, you're making a reference. Oh, okay. That's yeah. A reference to what? Oh, you still haven't seen it. Never mind. Is it Baby Driver? It's not Baby yes. Driver. All right. Anyway. So all, it's, it's from all, 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 all those tears from, from the Swamp of Sadness. Yes. Is it yes. from Star Wars? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So anyway, <laughs> so this 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 next gate you it's have to from, like it's from salt from all you have the to fans. encounter your 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 true self or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so the guys like most people think they're they're good, but really like they have cruelty in them. And like, yeah, I'd be done at this gate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 like, you know what? I'm going back to the swamp of sadness. Yep. I'm just, I'm just gonna stare at those statue tits until yeah. they shoot me. Yeah. I was just gonna say I'm, I'm going back to those titties. But like, so what I don't get. So uh, Trader comes up to, up to this mirror, he sees himself, but in superposed over himself is we see um, Bastion. Bastion through it. Like, like uh, does the Trader not see himself, or is 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 he is his true self what he is already? Like, is, is he already his true self? Like, like what? Well, his true self is Bastion because Bastion is reading the book. So he's put himself in that position. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, see, like in my mind, like I didn't remember this movie, so I thought at this point in the film, Bastion actually goes into the the like that world. Oh. Uh-huh. Now, like I thought he was part of it from that point on. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, he's not like no. no. There's one crossover scene in the swamp when he screams, I think. Yeah. Um, and like they hear him. Okay. Yeah, because apparently the turtle scared the ever living shit out of him. Uh, and the people in this, the book heard it somehow. But, uh, yeah, so we see there's a bit of bleed over there. Uh, so he sees Atreyu through the, I'm uh, sorry, Atreyu sees Bastion in the mirror. Uh, but he's, I guess that's what he was supposed to see. So he gets past that. Yeah, like, uh, uh Bastion, like, Bastion freaks out, throws the book at this point, I believe. Oh, he, he well, throw is a generous word. <laughs> <laughs> more like I guess he just let go of it while running and the momentum carried it <laughs> three feet foot and a half <laughs> it's a big book <laughs> it's one of those ones where it's like if I was the director I'd be like you, you sure you don't want to try that again <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah uh, maybe I'm alone in this but I had a lot of those moments where I was like if I was the director I'd be something. like oh sorry huh got mad and threw, threw something yeah you pulled that too no oh, he has a lot of those moments yeah <laughs> Yeah, I already have those. No, but I was thinking, you know, if I was the director, I'd be like, uh, you sure you don't want to try that again? Just then, no. And the librarian is me, in me, and it's like, what What are you doing, kid? You throwing that book? What are you, 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 you up and shit? Like, you left a note to that dude saying you were going to return that book. You piece of crap. Treat that book nice. I don't care if there's a mincing, boy-hungry, pedophile, dog camel monster in there. You return that book in the, or- in the, the order you found it. Right. Sorry, he definitely did not damage it with that. <laughs> it said, yeah, with, with the worst. I already ate all those Doritos. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. He did not damage the book with that throw. Like, no, certainly yeah. not. <laughs> he ruffled the pages, though. Yeah. 
<laughs> so where even are we? Now? Oh, so then Atreyu just goes through the gate and we're like, all right, we're not exploring that any further right now, I guess. Nope. Like for me, that should have been more towards the end of this. Like that should have kind of been like one of the final things he had to do. Cause like, it, it's like, should be a little more subtle of a build up to that, but nope. You would think so. But uh, then, yeah, to kind of make matters worse, he goes to the next Oracle, is what they're calling it, or what? Yeah, the, or the Southern Oracle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is an or. It, and again, it's just the, the statues from before, but now, now they're, they're glowing. Blue. They're glowing yeah, they're, blue. They glue blue. So they're special, like unicorns. Uh, little unicorns. Yeah. But um, a little, little about them. But it, or them titties. So wow. perky. So uh, he goes up to them. Perky boobs. And he said, you know, you have the answers I need. What do I need to do? And they're like, uh, find a new name for her, for the Empress. Yeah, so apparently fan fiction is what's going to save this world. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> we need to find an Earthling <laughs> child. You have to go beyond the boundaries of Fantasia, find an Earthling child, and get him to rename the Empress. Fanfic, that's what's going to save it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sonic the Hedgehog, that's her name now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it would be right. Dork the Dark Hedgehog. <laughs> and so we get what's probably the other iconic scene from this movie where he's he feels good now. He's like, all right, look, cool, let's get out of here. And um, Falcor just picks him up and he's like, yeah, as they're flying through everywhere. The music starts playing flying again. montage. Yeah, music's pumping. Yeah. You're like, if you only show the side of Falcor's head, this looks pretty cool. Yep. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Gross ass scales. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we find the nothing. Yeah, just shit gets crazy for a minute or two. Like scene was filmed on the level of like a, a Michael Bay production. Like you only see very specific parts of creatures, you know, Falcor and the kid, and like you're like, what's happening here? And no idea. <laughs> I'll tell you, I had to talk to your parents today. <laughs> I had to let them know I moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> no biggie, just just a, just a legal thing. It's all right. Oh, by the way, I dropped you. We can still hang out. Oh, by what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like we have the equivalent of like one of those Scooby Doo things where like the camera spins around them to look like they're spinning, mm-hmm. and Trey gets thrown off. Wait, when does that happen in Scooby Doo? Occasionally, I will not they go, get thrown the off a train. Cam- the camera in Scooby Doo will spin well, around. Well, you know what I mean. Like they, they just kind of take the footage and they spin it around and to make it look like people fell or something crazy happened, but they don't want to actually animate it. Oh, oh yeah. So okay. yeah, they'll do a total like 180 degree All rotation right. and fall on like their head. Road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any of that kind of stuff. I was like spinning around like. The... <laughs> All right. No, go. like the Matrix. Like Shaggy jumps in the air and. It... The camera does a full yeah. 360. There's, there's actually a camera in front of me. Vertically, not horizontally. I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Wake up! <laughs> um, what even happens here? Uh, Where are so we? So Atreyu Rally around is the now family. thrown from Falcor. With a pocket full of shells. Um, we have, we're Falcor. raging against the machine. <laughs> yeah. Atreyu! Atreyu! Uh, so, oh, that's it. He just lands on the beach. He's like, oh, I lost the Orin. Oh, great. I found a rock biter. Rock biter's all sad because he let go of his friends and then nothing what? took them. This is where I almost had to laugh because just the rock biter's like, these hands, they they look like they'd be big, strong hands. But I couldn't keep hold of the little man and the fast snail or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, that sounds so wrong. <laughs> Y'all are gross. <laughs> Sorry. This is well, well, what I was hoping for was like a boy touching scene. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that it would be one of those where like he held them too tight, kind of Lenny style. Oh. That, that was my thought too, to be <laughs> honest with you. And when you actually see the hands, there's Blood. just little <laughs> remains of oh. the two of them. There's <laughs> a crushed shell and yeah. some just goop dripping out. <laughs> <laughs> These hands are bleeding. Those right, hands so are not small. I know. These hands well, have squished a lot of snails and a lot of little s- guys. Some building. It's got paintings kind of showing everything we've done so far. And yeah. then there's a painting of the, uh, what is it, the Gamork? And then it turns around and there's the Gamork. Yeah. Is that, re- that's really the name they went with? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Gamork. Like Gamork and Gamindi. <laughs> 
Brian, you're an asshole. <laughs> Good morning, USA. I love you, but... So, uh... Well, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, side tangent here, but that... That made me think of G'day, which made me think of Crocodile Dundee, which made me think of there's a, another Crocodile Dundee sequel. Is that real? Are you for Ken, real? Kenny McBride. Yeah, like, is that real? Like, uh, wait, what? Hold like, on. Like, no, wait, wait, I could, wait, wait, wait. We I've seen up. like a commercial, like I, which I could have sworn was a trailer because it's him and Channing Tatum. Yeah. Meeting yeah. getting off a bus. Oh, wait, wait, uh, so, <laughs> so Eastbound and Down Dude is the son Danny McBride, of, of Crocodile yeah. Dundee in this movie coming up. Yeah. Like legit, and he has. He, it looks like he knows nothing about the outback. Which I think is is, is the is the. Is so the what's yeah. the point of the movie? <laughs> is he going to the outback? Yeah. Yes. With Channing Tatum. That's even Crocodile worse. Crocodile Dundee was all you know being Dundee. And then he went to L.A. for a sequel, and apparently he stayed there and had a kid who now has to go back to the outback. He had a well, kid. Well, no, in the sequel, Crocodile Dundee, they went back to Australia. Yeah. He had a to kid to avoid drug dealers. <laughs> oh, is, I thought. So he had a kid 30 years ago that's now 40 years old. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I was trying to remind you. So anyway, he uh, needs to learn what a knife is. Why? Yeah. And, but that's not... Well, guys, so, for twenty dollars, I, I thought I thought it was was, was, was one of those like funny or die things. I didn't know it was real. Like, I really hope it is. Maybe but, it'll be like that <laughs> Sinbad genie. <laughs> Fingers crossed, gentlemen. All right, uh, so it, yeah. whatever. We go to the top of the tower and like fucking the the Gmorks, He's saying a bunch of crap. I, by this point, I'm so checked out. Yeah, and the problem is, the more they let that puppet talk. Yeah. The worse it looks, mm-hmm. it's starting to look like uh, like not even Henson quality. It's just I'd almost rather they do it like Mononoke, where like the wolf, the big wolf, just opens its mouth once right. and like a whole bunch of words come. You just out. hear what it's like. You hear what it's saying. Yeah, yeah, rather than try to animate it like it's talking. I've seen more realistic lip syncs when they just took a real dog and put peanut butter in his lips. <laughs> mm. Like that's that's what we're talking about. Honestly, here. I've seen better acting when they did that with children as well. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this looks terrible. But <laughs> well, you think that looks terrible? Wait till they fight. Yeah, ultimately <laughs> the wolf is all like, "Yeah, I came to to kill this dude named Atreyu. Uh, I'm like I'm I'm the slave or servant." Yeah, he's, uh, servant. The, he's trying to help the nothing for some. Why reason? though? Like he's got some nihilistic thing going on. I here. guess. Yeah, sure. And, I mean, uh, I'm sure it makes sense, but by this point, it gives him a big. Dog I'm runner. trying not to fall asleep. <laughs> I think Tony actually is asleep. Tony has point. been asleep for the last Tony, like hour. Tony's yeah, sake in the swamp of sadness. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, um, it's not, not baby true. driver. He doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, I'm like, I don't know. And then the wolf's just like, "Hata!" and launches out of the wall. Because he goes, because because he goes, he goes. I was trying to find this kid, Atreyu, and I lost him. And, and Atreyu's like, "That's fucking me, fucker. Yeah. Like, you want to fight? Come get some. Yeah. Come, what's you believe? What's you believe? I'm, bleeding? <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Atreyu, bitch. Let's go. Man, this movie would have been better if Atreyu was played by Rick. Rick Ray. Ray. Oh man, I lost my magic necklace. Woo! <laughs> but, but, but legit, it looks like they took they took a, a, a legit like puppet. <laughs> and put it in an air gun. You know the one yeah. that just like t-shirts? <laughs> Fire <laughs> through, a, through a styrofoam wall. <laughs> the, there's no there's no like pouncing motion. There's no wind up. It's just like <laughs> these kids out there. I just, most of the scene all I could think of was the fright zone. Yeah. That hands so why? Because it's just it's just a little There was no goop involved. No, because it's just a little cave in a hole with a puppet coming out going rah rah rah, but it can't really go too far. The frat zone. The frat to, zone. Oh. So So yeah, it gets launched out and then Atreyu just he kills well, it. Well was holding out? like a stone knife in front of him the whole time. Yeah. If That's any of you that. at home can follow this, I hope you're laughing. <laughs> I know we are. So, yeah. Okay, Wolf Guy's dead. You're like, thanks for coming, I guess? Yeah. Like, like, whatever. There's no, there's no tie-in with him. Like, yeah. He makes one appearance earlier, but there's no, like, okay, yeah. whatever. And Trey's like, just like, I, I killed you. I'm going to go. Like, like, he, <laughs> he seems scary, but he doesn't, like, there's nothing really threatening because you don't see him do anything. We got no establishing shot where maybe he 
Could he just kill a deer or something right. or you know, could've, knock he, a tree over? He could have killed a Treyu's <gasps> horse instead yeah. of a Treyu's oh, horse. How awesome would that be? Like, I'm just sad. I'm going to just drown here. Or the dude with a snail or any, anybody. Yeah, anybody bit, else. Bit Falcor. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. anything. Like... This, this movie is... Maybe, like, he couldn't fly a Treyu over the gates because the wolf bit him. Right. Yeah, he needed your zero in right now. This, this movie is like, um, you don't... It's not long enough to give you any context for any of the characters. So they just show up, they do something, and they, and they leave. And you're like, what was that? Oh, what? I want, I want to know more, know more mm -hmm. about that shit. Like, it feels like this should have been a trilogy. Or this, yeah. yeah. Or this should be, like, a series of books. You know what I mean? Like, like it's just missing so much, so much... Like yeah. context of, of everything that happens, and, and, and we're just underwater now. Now, like this is one part where I was writing, and I'm like, "Where the hell do we go? Like, what's <laughs> happening?" <laughs> yeah, Falcor just drops out of the sky into the water. No, but you don't even like you don't see that. You don't see Falcor at all. Just there's a splash. There's a, there's a shining little light. Then it shows you Falcor's head. But you ne you never knew that was him yeah. that went in until you get to figure it out in your brain that oh, it must have been him because we're seeing him now. Like yeah. Anyway, he grabs the and like, brings it back. Why? Atreyu even needed to lose it when he just gets it back right now. Whatever. Um, no, that's made sense. Yeah. And he picks up Atreyu. Fantasia is now like an asteroid field. Yeah. Blow, like, it blow it up. Like the Death Star shot it. Um, the ruins of Alderaan. It's Krypton. Yeah. And we, the, the ivory tower's still there. We fly up there. To meet the Empress. We just crash right through the fourth wall. Yeah, she's looking sickly. I guess she's dying. Who? Hmm? The Empress? Yeah. The Empress looks fine. No, she's, yeah, she's, she's just, just like, it's all right. Her eyes. Cool. She's just slept in a while. Like, you know. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's, she's sure. a little terrible, but, you know. Treyu's all like, I didn't find the Earthling child. And she's like, yeah, you did. You brought him with you. He's right here listening to us. Just like there are other people watching his story. And I'm like, fuck you, movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the nothing. It's but a combination. When you were six. Yeah, when I was six, I bet this was really cool. Yeah. I mean, I never made it this far, but I bet this would have been cool. <laughs> yeah. Nothing has consumed us. It's a combination of Snapchat and Adam Sandler films. <laughs> it's destroying everything around us. Better than Rob Sandler films. <laughs> Although there's some overlap. There, there are. Yeah, there are. Some <laughs> those have vanished into the nothing. Yeah. <laughs> those are part of the nothing yeah. now. Yeah. All right, so that, that she's just like, no, everything's going to be okay. This kid just needs to give us, give me a name. And then, like, everything's falling apart. She's like, no, he just needs to give us a name. Give me a fucking name. <laughs> yeah. Just say anything. But she's <laughs> like, you already picked it. Just fucking shout it out. Just yeah, say yeah. it. Hey, hey, Bastion, how about you give me a name? A and he's just like, oh, this can't be real. I don't get it. I don't Trey's believe like, it. I don't care anymore. I'm, I, he, I died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just falls over and dies. Yeah. Meanwhile, we cut to the school. And Bastion is just staring blankly into the book. Well, he said that Drool is like died, slowly like... pooling around his face. <laughs> I honest, there was a moment where I thought we were getting a little match girl scenario where he, like he was just going to freeze to death or burn himself alive or something. No one. All right. Nope, just whatever. No one. Just you. you know, maybe you want to add some suspense here. Thing. Maybe this is when the bullies come and they took the book or something and he has to stand up to him and get the book back. Right. Yeah. Like <laughs> he never stands up to the bullies except for when he's got a. Fucking dragon. pedophile dragon hanging around him. Well, in, in his I dreams, mean, that's that's the best thing to chase bullies away with. But <laughs> true, especially at that age. Yeah. But it's all a ruse. Like he knows he can't legally come within fifty yards of these kids. Yeah, or so, the school. So finally, this kid works up the balls to yell a name. Can't he, give out Halloween candy. Yeah. He climbs up to a window and shouts it out to the heavens, and you can't even tell what it is. Something he just yells. It's Moonchild. I heard it. It's Moonchild. Yeah, this has been a bit of debate. Uh, some people think it's intentionally, like, kind of obscured, so you can use your mm -hmm. own imagination to make it up, which I think would be better. Because well, then I... they should have had a lightning crash and thunder and, yeah. like, have his just mouth moving and no audio. Because when you hear Moonchild, which I heard, mm -hmm. I was like, oh. I didn't hear uh, it was Moonchild until after Tony said it. It could have been Poo Pile for all. <laughs> it it well, might as well have been. I wish it was. <laughs> but here's the child. other problem with that. This is his mother's name? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. His mother was named Moonchild? Moon Unit and Dweezil. Yeah, that's it's true. That is like, true. Fair enough. Happens. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but my God. It's born in the 60s. Yeah, like it happens. <laughs> yeah. Moonchild. 
So yeah, she is now named Moonchild. Again, yeah, how great would it be if he just screamed shithead or something? Yeah. <laughs> like Shafid. <laughs> yeah. Shafid. Thank you for saving all of us. Yeah. I am now Empress Shithead. <laughs> I liked what you yelled during the movie there. You're like, her name's Gary. Can we be done now? Yeah. <laughs> it's Faquad. Faquad. <laughs> <laughs> but like it's, it's the shittiest edit editing feels like um he's in this window. There's lightning cra- light- strikes, thunder, rain in the window, all, all kind of bullshit. Her percent of falls from the floor. <laughs> his, his, he's lit and then dark. He's like, it's, he's alternating between being lit and, and being in, in the shadows. So you, you you cannot see his mouth moving. You can't hear because of thunder. You can't see it. And it's just, I'm like, what did he say? <laughs> what? Is it just me that missed that? Anyone right. else missed that? Like, I, either way, we got to. No, except the hearing bad. impaired because they got the yeah. close captioning. They clearly said, Moonshot. Oh, like a good call. <laughs> Yeah. Moon but child. Was, was, it yeah. was it was it was it well no Actually, but i mean you know once you get you know dvd releases this has been movies. debated so much that some people did try to watch in closed captioning which it does not say no it's he, moon yeah, child. it's I'm, like i know what it is gonna child. say in, in 84 in closed captioning would just say yell's name yes <laughs> <laughs> uh it has since been revealed it is in fact moon child yeah but uh either way you know i'm like, glad i didn't hear it as a kid Oh yeah! If I heard Moonchild, I'm like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Six years old, like, like the that's, fuck? that's the best I, I would have moment. turned into the Star Child from uh, 2001: Space Odyssey. <laughs> yeah. Right there, <laughs> like what? <laughs> First time an old man or the, the Star Child or the Eraserhead baby. Yeah, or the Eraserhead baby. <laughs> <laughs> I would just call this the eighties. I'd have been like Serpentor. Yeah. Okay. Evelyn. So. <laughs> <laughs> Come right. to my bedroom, Evelyn. But now he's floating out in the middle of space. I see your sphinx. This. And she's like, "Thanks for giving me a name, <laughs> but uh, you're a little late. This is all that's left of us, mm-hmm. and it's just a grain of sand." Luckily, you have the power to make wishes now. Yeah. And as you make more wishes, Fantasia will get stronger. This is like, what's your first wish? All right. So I'm thinking like, okay, this is just like a metaphor for like, he can read more stories and then fantasy is going to, you know, get stronger. Like his imagination is going to get stronger, something like that. And he's riding on Falcor. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. You know, <laughs> it's a good first wish. Falcor's like, ooh. It's really cold up here in these mountains. You should probably snuggle close to prevent shrinkage. And he's like, yeah! (laughs) Um, So then... I'm like, okay, I guess that makes sense. And then the second he chases the fucking bullies with Falcor. Like, Falcor's in the real world. I mean, to be fair, Falcor was going to do that anyway. Well, yes, but... (laughs) That's why the bullies pick on him. Yeah. Because they're tortured by Falcor. (laughs) Oh, okay. So... Now the kid has actual magic powers. I don't. Ugh. I don't fucking Ugh. know. I sure. believe the idea is that his world is not the real world because he too is in a book, he, or in this case, a movie. Oh, he, so the book ate him. Well, no. So he, he never was. Powers. He mm. was in this crazy, dusty attic. Yeah. With those candles lit, and it caught fire, and he died. Okay. And that's what this is. That makes uh, more sense. I told you, matchstick girl. Yeah. I don't no, know what no that means. means. People know what that is. What people? What people? <laughs> Thank you, Somebody Brian. Out there. Not, not people that listen to this podcast. Probably not. <laughs> I mean, maybe Get people... some culture. Come, Read a book. What culture? Wait, wait, wait. Dick jokes and Ex- pedophile jokes. Explain this culture of yours. <laughs> Never mind. All right. So and that's it. We just chase down the bullies. We leave them in a dumpster. We fly off on Falcor. Mm, yeah. Kid never went home. Dad's <laughs> Fuck probably... his dad. Yeah, his dad's drowning in orange juice and eggs. Eggs, <laughs> raw eggs. Yeah. My question, did he wish his mom back? <laughs> yeah, I was no. wondering that, but nope. I mean, my wishes are fairly similar, but they involve orange Julius and Cadbury eggs. Mm. And you're riding on a Not Reese's? Yes. Uh-huh. Not Reese's? Yeah, Reese's. Sure. Why that? I mean, in that in that dream, I don't have diabetes, so it's pretty good. All right. So on that weird note, she's a brick and I'm drowning. Wow. So. Ben folds. Okay. Can we can we go? <laughs> <laughs> That's the never ending story from 1984. So on RottenTomatoes dot com, critics gave this a score of 82 percent. Audience gave this a score of 81%. That's their personal thoughts and opinions. What about your thoughts, opinions, or recommendations on this? Um, Brian. 
So, six-year-old Brian has fond memories of this movie. It was very touching, very emotional. And resolution was, was, was what I would want to deal with my, my bullies with the big giant giant uh, luck dragon. Adult Brian. Ugh. It's it's a rough watch. It's a like I I still remember myself as a kid seeing this for the first few times, whatever first hundred times I've seen it. But like I I could not in good conscience tell an adult to see this for for the first time. I could like, I couldn't I, I I couldn't. But I would take like a six year old kid and make them watch it and to see like what they uh like where their disconnects are because you know six year olds see so much so much shit now like what like where their brain is at like like. You know what they figured out right right away. Like what, how the hell they do it? I would I would want to see that experiment. Like come on, kid, watch this. Like okay, back in my day. So you want to make one of those kids react to videos on YouTube? Yeah. Okay, might already be one for this. But uh, Rob, Falcor would also take a six year old kid. Oh, unrelated. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure. You, no, honestly, when I was younger, I think the reason I haven't seen this since the '80s is because I thought it was boring as hell and my adult self also thought it was kind of boring as hell um i don't want to take away from people that remember this movie fondly but for me i just like i can't imagine sitting through this whole film again so i'm not gonna recommend it uh it's definitely not for me um i was really struggling to actually get through the rest of this movie um so yeah that's pretty much it no not not so much all right Joe. So yeah, this is one of those reviews that I do where um, I'm going to put it in that category where leave your nostalgic memories of it where they are. If you liked this movie back in the day, just keep remembering what it is you liked. Uh, don't go back to watch it again. Um, if you've never seen it, then don't don't watch it. Um, maybe, like Brian said, if you show it to a six-year-old, like it might be something they'd enjoy. But uh, yeah, as an adult, don't. Just don't. Um, that being said, this in 1984, I'm sure this was a very groundbreaking and important movie. Um, and it was clearly a lot of imagination and effort put into it. And, you know, they tried, but it just it does not hold up. Um, so that being said, I can't recommend it, but I acknowledge that, like, I'm sure it was a good movie in its time. And I could see why it has an 80s critic review and an 80s user review. Yeah, um, I'm going to mirror a lot of what Joe said. Uh like there are good ideas to this i'd be somewhat interested in maybe looking at the books or if someone tried to re uh, to remake this that might not be such a bad thing um as much as any remakes are but uh yeah as far as this movie it's better being left in that nostalgia box in your mm -hmm. past because it doesn't look so good in the light of the modern day so yeah not a recommend from me C can i make a recommendation Sure, please. So there's another movie from the 80s about a kid reading a book um, <laughs> that, like, is one of the few movies that I think, like, almost universally is regarded as perfect called The Princess Bride. Oh, I thought you were going to say The Page Master and I was going to come across this table and Whoa. hurt you. Well, this, this is me we're talking about. <laughs> that's true. And I okay. believe that's the 90s. Yeah, but needless to say, like... If you want a movie about a kid, you know, exploring a story and, you know, kind of developing while he does so, and this one bonding with a parental figure, it's The Princess Bride. And, like, the story is way more interesting, way more exciting. Just watch that. And Peter the Falk. The fantasy's way better. Like, and yeah. what? Peter Falk is way less creepy. Peter Falk is way less <laughs> creepy. Falcor. Andre the Giant, some of the awesomest sword fights ever put the film. Anybody you killed my father, peanut? prepare to die. Like, just Princess Bride. Yeah. Done. Yeah, no arguments from me. I'll second that Joe, emotion. Yeah. Joe, you should make a module based off of this movie, but like fill in all the gaps and shit you wanted to hear that wasn't in. Uh, it's going to be one of those ones where like the characters are aware that they're characters in an RPG and, you know, they got to bring the the players to. It, it would we'll play be it. Shitty. We'll do it for the podcast. Mm -hmm. Listen right in if you want to hear Joe That's right. write a. Give story. us $20. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have to throw in another 20 just for Joe, but we'll see. All right. But uh, moving on from that, uh, recommendations instead being Princess Bride. So what do we have for the people, Brian? It's that B20 of fate time. It's time to roll. Whose roll is it this week? I think it's yours. It, it is yours. Is mine? Oh, shit. When am I going to watch my roll of 20? I already oh. know. That's quick. Oh, yeah. I'll take my one. It was almost a one. Eight. 
<sighs> All right. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Well, it's appropriate. Eight is 1986's Crocodile Dundee. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Huh. I, <laughs> okay. Can't that make, happened. Can't make that up. <laughs> wow. All oh, right. Wow. All right. That's going to be... We did not plan that, folks. So it's going to be... Next week, uh, come back to learn <laughs> what a knife is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also what balls are, because you grab some of those too, I think. Well, you know, a surefire way to tell someone's sex. Mm. Hi, this is a girl. Um, also, my thumb prepare for a lot of really terrible Australian impressions. Oh, for sure. From me, yeah, specifically. I don't, I don't know do about everybody else, but I'm sure I'll do something to help. I mean, that's every week. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it'll happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so besides Crocodile Lindy, what do we have for the people, Rob? Well, guys, we have for you the end of the episode, and we want to thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please check out our website, s 4 podcastpodbeancom You can find all of our old shows there. Uh, you know, download some of the oldies but goodies like Tremors and Beastmaster. Pretty good episodes. We have a new episode every week. Please consider subscribing to us. If you want to help us spread the word about the show, you can find us on Facebook or Twitter at 4AM Podcast. And, of course, if you'd like to write in, you can contact us at the 4AM Podcast at gmail.com. And you can always give us 20 bucks and request whatever movie you want at the sponsor link in the website at the 4AM Podcast or 4AM Podcast.podb. Thank you, Joe. 4AMPodcast.podbean.com. You can go to the sponsor link and sponsor an episode. Around, his brain was hit with the nothing right there for a moment. <laughs> He's pretty much it. Mm. All right, so we hope you all join us next time for Crocodile Dundee. But until then, deuces. That's not a knife. Rob, I'm going to your bathroom to leave a swamp of sadness. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs>
it's it's showing promise so far because it, it does yeah no take, I'm interested from what you said it does take place in the eighties yeah. Michael Bay has nothing to do with it yep yes and, all positive yeah you know, it's all and that's basically how they're going from here on out so so it's not but it's not a reboot they're just well this isn't not. a reboot <laughs> but I think the next Transformers movie is, is going to be like a stupid, soft reboot stupid probably. thought like yeah. Bumblebee like he didn't. He he had some head trauma or something when he crashed. He's uh his transformation when he first starts is a bumble ball. <laughs> He's like, let's go. He's like, <laughs> That'd be pretty great. Yeah, this is BB eight. Yeah. <laughs> it's BB eight. Oh god, I'll, I'll get there eventually. <laughs> All right. Figures going up. John Cena. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Brian, you can't see me. listeners at home. You can't see us, like literally. It's a podcast. <laughs> it can't right now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I'm sorry. Trying right. so okay. hard. I'm good. I'm good. It's so hard to keep that track. And you got so far. <laughs> but in, but in the, the end, end, I'm just gonna kill myself. Oh, wow. that was terrible. I feel bad. I'm sorry. You should. That's... I should. All right. That that killed the giggles, though. So thank you. Can we, can we do it now? I'm going to try.